Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, we are going to go over all of the Charlotte Tilbury releases that came out in 2020. A lot of these items I've had for a while now, so I can really give you my in-depth thoughts into these products. I haven't officially thought about this, but I would go as far as to say that Charlotte Tilbury was the brand of 2020 for me. They had a very interesting marketing technique where they came out with very little releases at a time. So they came out with a lot of releases, but it was normally like one or two or three things, never a full blown collection except for the holiday collection, I do believe. So just these itty bitty little releases every couple of weeks or so, which I personally kind of liked because it hurts spending like $500 on a collection at once. So as a makeup reviewer, I was a little bit more appreciative of that. It gave me content while not having to spend too much money at once. But anyways, I'm pretty sure I don't have everything. There's definitely some stuff that I did skip out on, but for the most part, I did dedicate this year to reviewing as much Charlotte Tilbury as I could and that I wanted to because I've really been impressed with everything that has come out from her brand. So we are gonna start out with the release dates. So we're gonna go earliest to latest. Again, might not be perfect, but general idea here, people. So one of the earliest releases that came out this year was the Pillow Talk collection, which at this point feels so long now. When this came out, we did not know what the world had in store for us. But the big guy that came out from the Pillow Talk collection was the Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette. So this is one of her big 12 pan palettes. And this I was not really that impressed with. Like I thought the quality was really great. I really, really did love the color story. It's a gorgeous pinky palette, but I was like, mm. It's just that one tone that Charlotte Tilbury always did. And then I found myself continually and continually reaching for this palette. I loved it so much that this, in fact, was the palette that I wore when I got married this year. Aww. So I liked it. I gave it a very good review because there was nothing bad I could say about the quality, but I didn't foresee it as something that was gonna be so loved by me. And it shocked me. One of my favorite palettes this year for sure. And if you don't like the pinky tones, you're probably not gonna be in love with this, but clearly I loved it. <laughs> Also in that collection, some lipsticks came out. So there was Pillow Talk the original, Pillow Talk the original lip liner. I already had that. That has been in her line for a while. Pillow Talk is what put her on the map. So she came out with Pillow Talk 2 Medium and Pillow Talk 2 Intense, both with a corresponding lipstick and lip liner. So currently, I am wearing a Pillow Talk 2 Medium lip liner. I love this lip liner. It is a deeper color than Pillow Talk 2 Medium. I love the color of her lip liners. I think they are great. I'm gonna do a little bit of a hand swatch for you comparing the two. And take a look here. This is Pillow Talk 3 Intense. Now this color in particular doesn't really remind me of the Pillow Talk color. I feel like it's just a random color with Pillow Talk pasted on it. I got a little bit of hate in that review, I remember, because I did say that these colors didn't really remind me of Pillow Talk and people were like, well, it's because it's supposed to be complementary towards deeper skin tones, which yes, I do agree, but I thought that the colors could have gone a different route. Like they're complete different undertones. They aren't reminiscent of the original Pillow Talk in my opinion, I think they need to be pinkier. But anyways, here is Pillow Talk 2 Medium. Here is Pillow Talk 3 Intense. The deepest color is still wearable on me. Of course, it's gonna be a deeper lip. I do think it was great that, I mean, she was inclusive of the deeper complexions with this launch, but being critical, I, I don't think the colors were like very Pillow talk -y. They would look great on other skin tones, but they weren't Pillow Talk. They weren't the same undertone. Anyways, those were really great. I really enjoyed that. And if you're my skin tone, I love Pillow Talk, the original. And Pillow Talk 2 Medium is also a very flattering, more bold nude. Okay, the next launch is what I fell in love with. And I was like, Charlotte Tilbury is on to something. So she came out with an eye color magic collection. So different colors were supposed to flatter different eye colors. I bought the whole collection. It was very expensive. So this was one of her bigger collections. She came out with four eye color quads and then four eyeliner 
duos. So let's first go into the quads. So one of the colors here is going to be Mesmerizing Maroon. I really love this one. It has gorgeous maroon <laughs> tones. Of course, it honestly runs a little bit plummy which I really enjoy. We have it super blue right here. This one was hard to get a hold of. It sold out pretty fast. I don't think I was as impressed by it as everyone else, but it is gorgeous. Green Lights was definitely one of my favorites, probably my favorite of this entire collection. I loved the green olivey tones in here, and green was really a popular color this year, and I feel like this was one of the first palettes that fed into that green color story that was popular. And then we have Copper Charge, and Copper Charge wasn't my favorite that released in this collection. I felt like it was the least unique. Gorgeous color story, but just the least unique. All four of these quads I thought were absolutely beautiful. The formula I noticed was creamier, more pigmented, just something about it seemed better. Everything was more rich and just much more divine. It really set the tone for all of the releases that she's come out with. Looking at everything that's come out after, you know, her shadow formula this year has changed and it's changed for the better. So all four of these quads I thought were lovely. If I would recommend to you guys. I think I've used green lights and mesmerizing maroon the most. Um, and what I love about mesmerizing maroon is it does have that almost plummy undertone, so that's what gravitates me towards it. All four are really banging. And then the other thing that totally shocked me was these eyeliner duos. So she came out with four corresponding eyeliner duos here. Copper Charge, Mesmerizing Maroon, Super Blue, Green Lights. And I had picked up one originally because I was like, I don't want to spend money on an eyeliner. I normally will skip on small things like eyeliners when I do a collection review. So I'd only bought one for the formula. And Charlotte Tilbury single-handedly changed my thoughts on eyeliner. Normally, I'm an all black eyeliner kind of girl, but she really encouraged me to try different colored eyeliners with this launch, and she has changed me. Now I'm not afraid to use eyeliner on my upper lash line. That is not black. Now, I, in particular, love the matte side. I think the colors of the matte side are really gorgeous. They look really great with the colors of the quad. Normally, when I wear these quads, I always just wear the matching eyeliner, but I will use these eyeliners all the time for different looks as well. Now they aren't the smoothest, most creamy formula, but they definitely work and because the colors are so gorgeous, I continue to use them. Not the biggest fan of the metallic side. I found them to not be quite as pigmented and they're harder, ooh, okay. And they're harder to show up on the eyes. But overall, even if, you know, maybe these aren't the best eyeliner formula, the colors in here are what are spectacular. It's not really a big thing to do colored eyeliner and I feel like Charlotte Tilbury just did it so well. The colors that she chose were amazing. So I've loved these. These will most definitely be in my 2020 favorites. Then, this was a pretty exciting launch for Miss Charlotte. She came out with really warm colors and like the summer vibes. Huge deal was the Airbrush Bronzer. I ended up getting mine in the shade number two medium. Such a good bronzer. This is the first bronzer in Charlotte Tilbury's line. She had like a defining color before, but she never really had a big old warm bronzer. It's very, very big. And this is a gorgeous formula. You know, it's a very pricey bronzer. You get a lot of product though. However, I mean, I don't know. Like, I really like it. I think it's a great bronzer. I think a lot of other great bronzers came out this year, though, so it does have some pretty tough competition. But of all the bronzers that have come out this year, I mean, this is definitely in the top. It's a fabulous bronzer, and if you really enjoy Charlotte Tilbury, I think you will really love this bronzer, especially if you can appreciate packaging. I love this. This is great. Along with that release was the Desert Haze Quad. And again, I remember when I reviewed this being very amazed at the quad quality of these mattes. Again, something about them just seems so buttery and just better than they were before. I have the Sophisticate now in my collection, which is kind of the cooler toned version of this all matte quad, and the formula is not as good as Desert Haze. Something about these colors are just so rich and creamy. If you have a deeper complexion, this quad is for you. I think it's going to be so stunning on a deeper complexion, but I love this. It pulls darker on my skin than it appears in the pan, so just be aware of that, but blends itself. It's going to do the work for you, so if you like these colors, I do recommend this. Then she came out with 
a little lipstick line and these are the love filter lipsticks and what was special about these is that on the bullet you can see there's kind of a soft matte lip on it and really really cute I really like that I wasn't as obsessed with the colors that came out in this line so I am currently wearing this color on my lips as my lipstick this is wedding bells yeah I don't know these aren't really colors that I thought that I would wear on my wedding if I'm being honest so she kind of advertised this or marketed this as a wedding collection and straight up you guys as somebody who does bridal makeup, these aren't really colors that I feel like my brides would go for, personally. Now, they're good colors, but they're like too deep. They have too deep of a base. They're dark. I don't know. I feel like a lot of times brides, I like like a lighter, brighter color that just adds liveliness to the face, not depth. But here are the three shades here. We have Wedding Bells, Mrs. Kisses, and First Dance. So here are what they're looking like. They're very, very pretty colors, but I do find that I didn't reach for these after I reviewed these. Like I reach for them every now and then, but it wasn't the most exciting collection or lineup of lipsticks that Charlotte has come out with. But the next product that I have here, pretty good game changer, I would say. I really do love the Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray that she came out with. I got this in a little travel size and I'm very happy about this, but once I run out, I will be happy to buy this in a full size. So this smells really nice. It has a very faint, sweet floral scent, which I really enjoy. The mist is nice and this really does extend your wear time when you put this all over your face. I'm sure you guys have seen those videos of where you put eyeshadow or eyeliner on your hand and then you spray this spray and then it doesn't move. It's crazy. This really does make your makeup last longer. This is one of the first sprays besides Urban Decay All Nighter that actually does that. I think I'm crazy but I feel like it smooths the appearance of my skin just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know it is a spray but I feel like my makeup literally looks better and smoother after I use this. I don't know if it's in my head, but I really, really like this. It's one of my favorite, favorite setting sprays that have come out this year. Really a game changer. The next item I feel like was a weird little release. She came out with two lip and cheek glows. So I picked up one of the two colors. This is Color of Dreams. And at the time, this sounded like a really good idea. I was like, we're in the summer. We're all into creams. What a great launch. And I do not like this product. This is the only one I think this year that I can legitimately say that Charlotte Tilbury has come out with that I do not like. So here is the shade. Looks like on my hand. <sighs> when I reviewed this, I definitely said this was not worth the money. It was very overpriced for what it was and how much product you're getting, but I said the product's fine. And you know what? I still think the product is okay, but it doesn't really ever dry down. I feel like my face feels sticky all day and I do not like that at all. So because of that, I'm very turned off by this product. I'm not really into it. I've used it a few times after and while it's not bad and if I'm wearing an all cream face I will continue to go for this but if I have just an ounce a little drop of powder on my face I just don't like this for that I don't like my cheeks feeling sticky I better be wearing all cream with this guy or none at all I these currently aren't even in stock and I think it probably was because I don't think that these got very good reviews anyways. They're not very good, so I wouldn't be sad if they don't come back. Probably her worst release this year, kind of taking a look around. Moving on to the next collection. This one was a fun one. This one was different. I feel like the items were kind of random, but, but I was digging it. She came out with this jewel collection. Again, just a weird little mini random collection that quite honestly, nobody asked for. So we'll start off with the eye product. This is the Eye Jewel Pot in Walk of No Shame. The packaging, very, very stunning. Take a look here. So this is a very weird feeling. You don't really pick up product. It's not creamy. It's almost silicone-y, I don't know but this is gorgeous. It has the most tiny little glitters in there and they are like microscopic, but that effect adds the most gorgeous twinkle to the eyelid and it does not move. It lasts all day, you guys. Once you put it on, it's not going to go anywhere. They do also have the shade Pillow Talk. I didn't pick that up, but I wouldn't be opposed to it because this is a gorgeous product. I really enjoy this. If this is the kind of product that you enjoy, 
so good. Along with this collection was two corresponding lip glosses. She has since expanded on the colors, which I find very interesting. Love the packaging of these. They have a gorgeous glitter kind of jeweled top here. So the first one that we have is Pillow Top. So we have, that's gonna be that second one down. And then the other one that we have is Walk of No Shame. And she also came out with a little mini Walk of No Shame collection based around the colors. I did not pick any of that collection up. So that's something that I'm missing. But this one is a little bit deeper and I forgot to put this when I was doing my makeup application, but it is the gloss that I'm wearing now and it's very pretty. Honestly, I'm not super impressed with these glosses. I don't really notice anything too different about these glosses from any regular gloss in her collection. I was hoping something about this would be an amazing formula and since it was a jeweled collection and you know she came out this glittery eye topper that this would be a glittery lip gloss. There are very, very faint glitters in this lip gloss, but nothing I can really see on the lips. So that's why it's just kind of like a normal lip gloss to me. Honestly, I like her other lip gloss formula better. So I wasn't that impressed by these. That's why I haven't purchased any more colors. We have an eyeliner and a mascara that she came out with next. So the Feline Flick. So this actually was already in her collection, but she reformulated it this year. And this has a nice felt applicator. I think I prefer felt applicators for liquid liners. And I like how long this one is. I haven't tested her previous formula, so I don't know the differences, but I really like this eyeliner. It stays put, it's quite black, it applies a perfect amount of product, and it's very easy to apply because it is such a thin, long applicator. I think I've tried better liquid liners this year, but I definitely like this enough to keep it in my collection and use it consistently. I don't think I would repurchase it once I'm done, but I think she does have a really nice black liquid liner, so it's pretty nice. And then she came out with this gorgeous Pillow Talk mess. Mascara. And I will admit, today was the first day that I used it because I have so many mascaras open, but I figured for this video I would try it out. And I'm not the biggest fan of the applicator here. Like half of it doesn't have the little spikies on it, which I think, I mean, obviously it's not that hard to twist your brush and apply it, but I just don't like it. Not a big fan of it. The formula itself seems very, very nice. I had trouble reaching my bottom lashes with this because of the weird applicator, but once I got the product on, my lashes look very nice and thick. So I'm gonna have to continue to use this more because you really can't tell a mascara formula from the first time that you use it, how you can really feel about it. So I will have to keep you updated on it, but I can say this packaging, 10 out of 10. It's a gorgeous mascara packaging. We're getting to the good stuff. We're getting into holiday territory at this point. So we'll start off with our little, our, our silver package friends. I've talked about both of these products a lot, so I'm gonna go through this quickly. First and foremost, we have the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize, her second big palette to come out this year. Very gorgeous color story. I think I like the Pillow Talk better than this one. I've reached for the Pillow Talk more, but I like that you get a little bit more variety in this palette. You get four truly different looks, not just depths like the Pillow Talk. These are complete different color stories. Very, very gorgeous. I haven't used this a ton, and I think it's just a mixture of so many products coming out this time of year, but also, it doesn't speak to me like some other Charlotte Tilbury palettes have come out. I think it's gorgeous. The quality is not compromised at all. It's still the great formula that Charlotte Tilbury has. And I'm surprised I don't love it as much as I do because we got some purple in here. We've got some taupes in here. I might have to keep you updated like next year or something because this hasn't had the opportunity to be played with that it deserves. On standby, but still an amazing palette. However, something that has been used and abused, and probably my most used Charlotte Tilbury product that has come out, and it came out like a month or two ago, the Hollywood Superstar Glow Highlighter. Now again, I don't wanna cover this too much because I featured this in favorites videos, best of videos, favorite highlighter videos, best of the holiday videos. This has been it all because I just think that it is the most gorgeous, delicious, amazing highlighter and you're not really gonna be able to see that in the swatch at all but it gives you the most gorgeous glow from within look it blends into the skin seamlessly shows no texture and it's my all-time favorite highlight best release that's come out this year just saying <laughs> we have a second lip collection that came out 
I guess is it the second? Just as far as individual releases, this was a lip collection, the second one. And these are the Super Nude collection is what she was advertising it as. And these guys were special because they have this bejeweled tip, which is very, very pretty, but a bit underwhelming based on what she could have done. Like I want it all to be bejeweled. Very perplexed by this collection name because this is not a nude collection. I got some hate saying, well, it's not new to you because you have fairer skin or lighter skin, I guess I would say. No, like this is not a nude collection. I don't mind the different depths. I think that is great. I think that truly is what a nude collection, you know, light does not mean nude, but Red does not mean nude either. That's not very nude, you know? So that's more so what I was talking about. Not necessarily, like these first two, they are nude. This is Super You, Super Nude, and Super Starlet. Super Starlet is not a nude. That's why I thought it was weird that she called this a nude collection. Regardless, I like this collection better than the Love Filter collection that came out. Super Starlet was actually featured in my most recent favorite reds video and you can watch that video to see how this looks on me but it's a gorgeous deep red i love it it's one of my favorite reds now um super you and super nude also really gorgeous colors but i don't think those are very unique i probably have other charlotte tilbury colors that are very similar to those but they're still really great and they're still really wearable and lovely now we have another holiday quad and this i was going to originally pass on but i did end up picking it up once i saw it in stores this is the charlotte tilbury dazzling diamonds quad and i'm gonna swatch these here for you now i really do not like her palette of pops typically i find them to be super folly outy like they just fall out all over your face you wake up with glitter everywhere it's just it's not not a cute look when it comes to her palette of pops in my opinion but i do feel like she did improve her formula because i did end up picking this up because when i saw it in person i thought it looked really really stunning so here are how they look so yeah, I really do think that she did improve the formula. I don't get glitter fallout with this, and it does add a nice perfect pop to the lid. You know, it's hard to get a full look with this palette. I don't really recommend it, but I do reach for this for a little extra pop. So I'm actually wearing this on my eyelids right now. I just grabbed a little bit of this color, and I put it along my inner half of my eye and it just adds a gorgeous soft little sparkle so I do really 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 like it. I don't know necessarily if it's worth the price because it is not very cheap but I really do like it so if you're into that kind of formula I don't think you will be disappointed. She also came out with a Stone Rose Beauty Instant Look in a Palette and I can't get myself to get rid of the box quite yet because it's so pretty. And this is the first palette from Charlotte Tilbury that I bought of this kind. So she's come out with a couple in the past couple of years and I finally ended up picking it up. Now, I don't know, I just have never been that into this layout of a palette, but I really enjoy it. I've used it two or three times because it is still fairly new to me. But today for this video, this is the majority of the color product on my face. So I started off with the bronzer in my, you know, my outer parts of my face and it's a softer bronzer. I don't see it working very well on medium to deep complexions. It did work on me. And then I used both of the cheek colors right here on the center of my cheek. I really like it. It's like a muted rose color. I think it's great for everyday, applied beautifully. And this highlighter, I was very surprised by. It's a lot more glowy than I thought it was gonna be. It looks a little bit subdued in the pan, but it's quite glowy on the face. And then I finished off with these three eye shades. So I started off with number three as my crease color, and I kind of put it as a light wash on my lid as well. Then I took number three, the deepest shade, and I did my outer corner and my lower lash and it pulls a little bit more warm, I feel like, and it's not as deep as I would like for it to be, but for every day, it's great. And then I applied this shade right here all over my lid and it's very pretty, again, very soft. So for every day, I think this is really, really gorgeous. All in one, I got all of the color on my face with this one palette, so I think it's really nice. I like really dramatic makeup, so this is very, very soft for me. That's why I had to go into the palette of pops to add a little extra of a bling. But I do think on an everyday basis, this is actually really wonderful. If you're working or you're a mom or you're just a busy person altogether or you just don't like dramatic makeup, this really does give you all in one. And I think it's a beautifully set up palette. I don't know, I'm not so into all in one palettes. 
No idea why, but I'm not. But I wanted to try Charlotte Tilbury's version. I think it's really nice and I can see myself continuing to use this. It doesn't knock my socks off, but it's great. All right, let's get into the final release. I know since this, she has released, I believe like lip balms or something, which looked really, really cool, but it didn't grab my attention enough to purchase. But these, this collection, she really ended it with a bang when it comes to the Fire Rose Quad. So this, I think, is her best quality palette to date, honestly. If you're familiar with Queen of Glow, that was her best quad before this one. But this one gives it a run for its money. So here's the color story. And I wouldn't necessarily say this is a color story for me. Yeah, but the formula in here is so beautiful that suddenly it is a color story for me. The, the quality in here is just something like she's never done before truly the shimmers in here are buttery smooth crazy pigmented and the best thing about this quad is this second shade down this is the super pop a brand new formula from charlotte tilbury you heard me say a couple minutes ago i wasn't a big fan of her pop formula this super pop formula amazing she better not lower her quality after this. Every quad needs to be this quality. I've always said, I think Charlotte Tilbury palettes are worth it, but I don't think they are gonna be for everybody. You have to be really, really into makeup to kind of be able to tell what makes it worth it. And even then, sometimes not. If every quad is like this quad, I take all of that back. 100% worth it. Okay. <laughs> and then the final two products in that release, not nearly as exciting as the quad. She came out with two new eyes to mesmerize. I found these underwhelming, especially having to follow a quad like that. I think if these were an individual release, I would say, oh yeah, these are pretty. So we have Sunset Rose right here. On the eye, I just, it's okay. You know, it's okay. I don't think these are really 100% worth it, if I'm being honest. I think they're really nice. I like to use a fluffy brush and blend them out all over the eyelid. But I like when I have my cream products as kind of like a glitter. The second one down is Copper Sunrise. I like Copper Sunrise better than the first color. I think it's a little bit more glowy to give you that Charlotte Tilbury glowy eye look. So I think these are okay. They last nice. Honestly, I prefer to use these as eye bases or with a fluffy brush just as a one and done kind of color. I think they're nice, just not as exciting as some other things that have come out. All right, you guys, so that covers all of the Charlotte Tilbury releases for 2020. I hope that you guys enjoyed this roundup that I did and that you found it helpful. If you are interested in picking any of these items up, I did put them down in the description box. They are affiliated, so I do earn a small commission, but don't shop from them. If you don't want to give me money, I don't know, whatever. If you don't want to support my channel, it's fine. Anyways, <laughs> um, I'm really excited to see what Charlotte Tilbury has in store for us next year. I know she did end up selling her company, but so far, the quality doesn't seem compromised. So I am looking forward to see what happens to her brand next year. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.